Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm David Knight. It's Monday, December 28th, 2015. Here are our top stories. Tonight, how the surveillance state is hitting the open road. Then, the president of Gun Owners of America on what's ahead for 2016. After that, how terrorism is threatening the First Amendment. And a White House official calls the war on drugs a failure. Are you saying that the way we have waged the war on drugs for more than 40 years has been all wrong? It has been all wrong. That's next. As the aircraft land at Mina, to this day, C-130s full of cocaine, so heavy they, they come in hard. The trucks are unloaded, it's shipped into your communities, and you love it. I've interviewed Terry Reid, who was CIA, at the airfield, saw all of them out there. Just, it was a party. And that's why they keep drugs illegal, so they can put you and your family in prison if you're dumb enough to use it. Or Clean, pure drinking water. You can't survive without it. But where do you get it? Alexa Pure Pro is a brand new groundbreaking gravity-fed water filtration system that is like no other. The Alexa Pure Pro transforms water from virtually any fresh source into clean, healthy drinking water, pairing the unprecedented super filtration power of an all-new gravity block core with a hybrid chromatic shell. It removes up to 99.999% of impurities, including bacteria, viruses, fluoride, disinfectants, volatile organic contaminants and hormones filter capacity up to 5,000 gallons stainless steel construction easy assembly low maintenance replacement filters are simple to install and now as part of an exclusive limited time introductory offer you can save $20 off the retail price and get free shipping this is a limited time offer so order your unit today and receive free shipping and $20 off go to infowarsstore.com or call 888-253-3139 as we end the year, there are a lot of wars inside. And I'm not talking about just the literal wars that are happening all over the Middle East. Of course, there's a Syrian war that our government has worked to foster, to create, uh, to essentially establish a regime change, to create chaos in the region. Are we going to have a World War III? Is that uh, no-fly zone that they want so desperately to put into Syria? Is that going to be the trigger for a conflict between the U.S. and Russia? But, of course, there are some other wars that are just as real. Some of these are metaphorical wars. Some of these have been going on for decades, like the drug war. But, of course, there's other ones, like the cyber war. And, of course, that is an attack on our Internet, on our free speech. It's an attack on our privacy. It's an attack on our ability to be able to move about freely. We've got an article. We're going to talk about this in the news today. It's rolling out. First, with commercial traffic. It's also an attack on our ability to engage in commerce and trade without surveillance. That's what the war on cash is about. We've also got some stories about the war of civilizations, the clash of civilizations that's being created deliberately by those in our government and the top of other Western governments. This is a deliberate orchestrated effort to try to destroy the economy, the culture, and the sovereignty of Western governments. And of course, the tools that they're using to do this are open borders and massive migration. And then at the end of this, the show tonight, we're going to have an interview with Larry Pratt of Gun Owners of America. We're gonna talk about the war on guns, but of course it's really a war on our constitutional protections, a war on the way that we uh, have always established due process. Are we going to have a star chamber that accuses people in secret and then takes their rights? Are we gonna have a government that is essentially run as a dictatorship? through executive orders, whether by the president or by bureaucracy. But let's begin first with the cyber war. All of these wars have one thing in common. They want to master the human domain. They want to centralize control. And of course, ultimately, that control is going to be centralized globally. But they all want to control and watch your every movement. Take a look at these new federal rules that are going to be applied to truckers at the beginning of the year. This is something that is coming out of a bureaucracy. It's not coming out of the Congress. No, the Congress doesn't write laws anymore. The laws always come from a bureaucracy. And the Washington Post points out, they take an example of a man named Brian Spoon. They say, uh, for his entire career in truck driving, he's tried to be his own boss. That's exactly what they do not want. They don't want you to have any financial or economic independence. He's a third-generation trucker. He started driving in the military. 
He bought his own truck back in 2004. First, he leased it to a company. Then he became an independent. But now his freedoms are being taken away. They're being taken away by a new federal regulation. Not a law, but a regulation. He and more than 3 million other drivers have until the end of 2017 to buy and install an electronic logging device that connects his engine and broadcasts his speed and its location to the shipper. Now, understand, this is something that is being done by a paper log right now to the uh, people that they would work with or work for. But this also has direct application to you as an individual. This isn't something that's just going to be used to stop truckers. The Department of Transportation has already mandated uh, devices to be put into your cars. You're going to pay for them, and they are calling them talking cars, vehicle-to-vehicle -vehicle communication. Of course, what they're going to be talking about is you. They're going to be the, measuring the same types of stuff that they're measuring with the truckers, logging their location, logging their speed, looking at how they're driving. And, of course, that's going to be used to pressure you out of private vehicle ownership in the same way that they're trying to pressure the truckers first out of uh, being independent businessmen. They say this could be the final straw for many truckers who've grown impatient with the new restrictions. The mandate is broadly unpopular since it represents a loss of control. They say the industry is going to lose a whole section of very safe drivers who could work for a few more years but are just going to call it quits. Of course, that's the desire. That's the design. They want them to get out because they're going to replace them with robot trucks. So this is one way to force them out with regulations, just like they're going to force you out of driving your own car. Now, they are going to push back on this, and of course, they have done so in the past. They've pushed back against the Federal Motor Carrier Safety Administration. That's the particular bureaucracy in this case is exerting their control over people's lives. They say the first attempt at uh, doing this, they came back and said, this is going to... Uh, doesn't have any measurement in here, anything restricting harassment of drivers by these trucking companies, pushing them in some cases to drive more than the legal limit. And of course that cuts both ways, but that's not fundamentally the issue. We have to understand where this is really headed. We have to understand the end game because this is being applied not just to truckers, but as I said, to private individuals, to private car ownership. We look at this article here, private car ownership is on the road to becoming a rarity. And of course, they're very excited about this and they hate individuals driving cars. This is something we've seen for a very long time from the socialists, from the people running uh, our government, from the local governments all the way up to the federal government. They want to take away your vehicle. That's an element of freedom for you, but they see it as a tool of control. They can control your movement. It gives them another base where they can build their little bureaucratic empire. And of course, this is a Malthusian view of the car. We just have too many cars, we can't control them, we can't build the roads, and we need to focus everybody into these tiny cities, and we don't want you spread out into the suburbs, so we want to con confine you into the cities as part of this Agenda 21, as part of this uh, 2030 agenda that they've just put together. That's what is fund fundamentally behind this, but they also want to be able to watch and control your every movement. They say that uh, there's an ocean of cars and policymakers and common folk of life have been powerless against the siren song of the automobile. Well, that is simply a song of freedom, of independence, of being able to go wherever you want to go, whenever you want to go. That has been the fundamental freedom that Americans have celebrated since the middle of the 21st century. They want to take that away. And, of course, they offer us a futuristic utopia where uh, all the cars are owned by just one corporation and, of course, they're going to be controlled by the government. The only good news, as we see in California, the DMV there is starting to pull back. They've seen Google cars involved in accident rates that are five times what individual humans have been involved in. And so now they're saying that they're not going to allow these cars to operate on the roads unless they have a human driver in them. Nevertheless, we need to understand the push and the pull between corporations and governments to try to set up, again, this kind of fascist crony capitalism that will allow a few elite uh, businessmen to control everything, working with the government so the government will have ultimate control over your movement, watching you everywhere you go. Look at this example out of the UK. Surveillance powers will help to unmask online bullies, as if this is a pressing problem. They're going to take away your privacy on the internet with a sweeping new surveillance powers to unmask anonymous internet bullies and bring them to justice.
Was that really a problem that needed to be addressed? Is that a problem that we need to sacrifice our privacy for? They say a new power that will force internet providers to retain web browsing information will help the police to hunt down and identify the most serious cyber bullies and trolls. <laughs> Pretty amazing. Now, of course, a lot of people see through these phony justifications that the government is using. There's a story from the Washington Post that was linked on the Drudge Report. Techno skeptics' objections are growing louder, and they talk to a documentary filmmaker and a musician, a political activist. She says she's not paranoid, but she keeps duct tape over the camera lens on her laptop computer, something Alex Jones has been doing for over a decade, probably two decades. Because as everyone knows, these gadgets can be taken over by nefarious agents of all kinds. That's the way the Washington Post puts it. Now, of course, that kind of snarky sarcasm is a little bit different. It's one level removed from just scoffing at people and dismissing them as tinfoil hat conspiracy theorists. No, you're not paranoid if they're really watching you. And, you know, the people who are the conspirators uh, are the people who are watching us. And it's typically the government. People are beginning to wake up. This is something that Hugo de Garris talked about in his book, The Artelike Wars. And of course, he was focused on people waking up about artificial intelligence. There's also the aspect of people waking up to surveillance by the government. And of course, they're coming together. The Washington Post tries to make this look like they are uh, idiots, that they're kind of kooks. If you look at the picture that they've got there of a guy with his eyes rolled back playing guitar, uh, they say the, the powerful definitely do not want us to reboot things. They will go to great lengths to stop us. They will use brute force or they will use bureaucracy. Now, that's exactly true. The people are saying exactly what is going to happen. And as Hugo de Guerra talked about, there would be a group of people who were technologically elite. He called them the cosmos. He said people are going to wake up and see that the technology is running out of control, that is going to run over them. He called those people Terrans. Some people call them Luddites. Nevertheless, we need to do exactly as Donald Trump was talking about with the borders when he said, we want to understand what's happening here. We want to take a look and see what is coming in and then determine what we're going to do about that. That's what these people are saying about technology. And of course, it's, it's, they come across and say, well, you want to ban all Muslims or you want to ban all technology. No, we want to understand what's going on. And we also want you to understand that we should have encryption and privacy. That is something that Apple's CEO, Tim Cook, talked about on uh, CBS's uh, 60 Minutes about a, a week ago. And of course, there was a massive pushback against that. He's talked about that in the past. He is responding to the disgust that people have about this voyeuristic, paranoid government that wants to monitor and control everything that we do. And so when he's talking about how they're going to put encryption uh, in at a system level, so that when the government demands that they turn over records, they'll turn them over, but they'll be encrypted records. And of course, the government will still be able to decrypt those records. Nevertheless, the government is very angry about that. We immediately got uh, reactions from a Manhattan district attorney. He said, if the government lays a proper warrant on us today, then we will give the specific information that's requested because we have to. In the case of encrypted information, we don't have to give it. That's what Tim Cook said. Of course, this uh, district attorney said, um, iPhones will now then become the first consumer products in American history beyond the reach of lawful warrants. The result is crimes will go unsolved. Victims will be left beyond the protection of the law. No, they will just have privacy. But then, of course, we have this senator, Senator Tom Cotton, who says it's going to be the preferred messaging system of child pornographers, drug traffickers, and terrorists. That's how they like to portray everybody who wants to have privacy. And I want you to just think about how crazy this desire to monitor and control everything that we have, the incessant desire to know even more about us. Look at how they push back in the latest debate. We actually had people saying that Ted Cruz should be investigated by the Senate Intelligence Committee because he made a minor statement about the monitoring of people. Now, of course, this is part of the debate on counterterrorism. Marco Rubio never saw an espionage program spying on the American public that he didn't want to extend. What Ted Cruz said was what he knows is that the old program covered 20 to 30 percent of phone numbers to search for terrorists. The new program covers nearly 100 percent. That gives us greater ability to stop acts of terrorism. And he knows that's the case. Now, Marco Rubio implied in the debate, he said, let me be very careful when answering this because I don't think national 